Well, we're really closing in on the end of derivatives, and I've got a special present for you tonight. I've got three mini lessons for you. We're going to ta tackle three separate topics. Um, the first one being what we call logarithmic differentiation. And you're sitting there thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We already did derivatives of logs. Well, we derived equations or functions that already had a natural log in them. So I'm going to show you something a little different tonight. Then we're also going to talk about bases other than e in regards to exponential functions. So you've already derived like e to the x, but what about y equals 2 to the x? You know, it's still an exponential function, but the base is now a 2 instead of an e. And then last but not least, we're going to, again, we're going to talk about bases other than e with regards to logarithmic. So you've already done like the natural log of x, but now we're going to do maybe y equals log base 2 of x and talk about his derivative and how to derive him. Well, if I was you, this is the one I'd be scratching my head about thinking I already did this one, but I'm going to show you a real wild function here. I want you to consider the function y equals x minus 2 squared all over radical x squared plus 1. Now the difference here compared to what we did yesterday, as you'll notice, now this pre-existing function has no lns in it right now. So right now, there's no reason to do du over u. If I dove in right now, I'd be using quotient. And while I'm doing quotient, you know, if I derive to the top and while I derive to the bottom, there would be quite a bit of chain rule. And again, your imagination can only, uh, you know, get you started on how wild this one's going to be and how intensive the cleanup's going to be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a log. And again, the golden rule in math is whatever you do to one side, you got to do it to the other. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. And as long as I'm doing that to both sides, it's a legal move. Okay? So, you know, as far as our notes go, we're going to natural log both sides. And this is legal, of course, to, on any function. We could have used this technique on you know, all the problems we've ever done leading up to this point now. The reason I did that, and you're sitting there wondering, why? Why would you introduce natural logs if we didn't have to? Well, again, we're going back to Algebra 2, and we're going to take advantage of all of our log properties, and we're going to expand to this rascal out. Minus 1 half natural log of the quantity x squared plus 1. Up until this point, right, you know, right up till now, I haven't done a lick of calculus. I haven't done one bit of calculus. Now I'm actually ready to derive, and I have this actually is an implicit problem. So as I derive the left side, it's going to be my du, which in this case is dy dx all over u, equals 2 times du over u minus 1 half du over u. Sound like a broken record, I'm sure. Now, the last thing I need to do is I need to get the dy dx by itself. I need to isolate that rascal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by y. Okay, I'm going to kill this bear. Boom, boom. And then over here, I don't want to leave the right side in terms of both x and y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute at the beginning of the problem we said y is really equal to this ugly quantity. I'm going to substitute that quantity back in for the y that I just multiplied to the other side so that it isn't strictly in terms of x. Now, I know that sounds scary, but the good news is, is there really isn't much else to do. So I've got 2 over x minus 2 minus, let's say those bears kill each other, so I got x over x squared plus 1. We we'll wrap it up. We're going to multiply by the y we started with x minus 2 squared all over radical x squared plus 1. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my final answer. I'm going to stop right there. And, you know, if they wanted the slope at 0 or a slope at x equals 3 or x equals whatever, we'd be ready to find it right now. The other time that logarithmic differentiation really comes in handy is on a particular function that might look like this, x raised to the 2x plus 1. Now, this is a really wild function because what you'll notice here is we've got a variable in the base, Okay, aka right here. And we've also got a variable in the exponent. So this is very interesting what we've got here. We've got x is both in the base and the exponent. And I want you to really know here, big asterisks here. The power rule that we learned early on, long time ago, does not apply. Does not apply. The reason it doesn't apply is because the power rule says your exponent has to be an in, or um, you know some kind of real number. Cannot the exponent can't be a function of x? So that goes out the window right now. So in this particular case, when I have a bare variable in both the base and the exponent, I'm going to use logarithmic differentiation. In other words, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. 
what's real special about this? Again, you're wondering why. Well, the only reason I would do this is if I could take advantage of my log properties. And in this case, the exponent can come down. And again, I haven't done any calculus up till now. I'm finally ready to take the derivative. I've got my du over u. Okay, equals. Now I do have product rule, unfortunately. So I've got first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And I'm just going to clean this up a whisker. There really, really isn't that much to do. That's the good news. All right, so again, I'm going to multiply my y to the other side. So I got dy over dx equals, let's see, I've got 2x plus 1 all over x plus 2 natural log of x. Multiplied my y to the other side. This y went right here. And then I substituted the original function into y's place. Ladies and gentlemen, boom, we're done. That's our derivative. All right, one mini lesson down, two to go. So now we're going to talk about bases other than e with regards to exponential function. And we've done a really good job of deriving e to the x. Now we're going to move on and say, okay, can I derive you know, something like 2 to the x or 5 to the x and whatnot? So we're going to jump right into our new rule, and we'll practice applying it a little bit. So let's derive a to the x power. And, of course, let's say to ourselves, let's let that a equal a constant. So just use your imagination and imagine that a is a 2 or a is a 6 or a 10, whatever your favorite constant is. Our derivative is going to be the natural log of a times a to the x. And more generally speaking, what if the exponent was more obnoxious and so u represents a function of x? The derivative is still going to be the natural log of a times a to the u times the derivative of u, the exponent. You're probably just you know, your your mind's ready to explode. You're like, oh my God, I can't, I can't imagine. You know, I just don't have uh, the ability to memorize one more thing. Well, it really isn't any different than what we've been doing, okay? This same rule is the same one you've been doing for e to the u, all right? Apply that same rule because, again, e is a constant. So I should be able to apply, you know, this rule right here to this particular derivative. So take the natural log of your base times the original function times the derivative of the exponent. What you'll notice is the natural log of e, we didn't used to write that because it's a 1, and that's why we've never had that part in there. Other than that, what's revealed? The original rule we've been using. But needless to say, you know, here's our new rule for today. Let's go look at a couple of examples and see if we can't practice. Just remember the three components. Um, the only real new one is the natural log of a. All right, a couple of uh, little rascals to get us warmed up with. I think, you know, with a lot of these derivatives, the most important thing is, you know, the first couple of thoughts that go through your mind, are you able to recognize what type of function is? So when you look at number one right here, you know, do you instantly look at that and say, you know what, that's an exponential function because the base is a constant and the exponent's a, you know, some kind of variable. So we've got an exponential function. The base is not e, so I'm going to have to use the rule we just saw on the last slide. And the derivative is going to be the natural log of the base times the original function times the derivative of the exponent, which in this case is just a friendly one. So that's all there is to it. On the second problem here, again, the key here is just identifying that it's an exponential function. Just having that thought go through your mind. And once you identify it, you can talk yourself through the rule. It's the natural log of the base times the original function times the derivative of the respective exponent with respect to x. Well, it certainly wouldn't be a calc video if we didn't have to write the equation of a tangent line as the directions are implying. So I want you to consider the function 6 raised to the x minus 3 power. And let's go ahead and write the equation of the tangent line at the moment when x equals 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate the derivative with respect to x. Talk ourselves through it. We've got ourselves an exponential function, so it's going to be the natural log of the base times the original function times the derivative of the exponent. Let's evaluate the derivative specifically at 3. Natural log of 6 times 6 to the 0 times 1, uh, which turns out to be just strictly natural log of 6. The only other thing I'm missing, really, is the y value. And I'm going to go back to the original function. I'm going to evaluate f of 3 right off the bat. Uh, 6 to the 0, again, is 1, so there's my y value. And just put it all together, my tangent line is y minus 1 equals the natural log of 6 for my slope times the quantity x minus 3. I'm an interesting line, huh? One of my favorite exercises of the entire year is coming up right now. Uh, I'm going to put four problems on the screen. And what I want you to really work hard on doing here is to hit the pause button. And I want you to try 
to derive each of these functions, okay? And I want you to talk yourself through them, identify what kind of a function it is, figure out what rule applies, and, and go ahead and take the derivative the best that you can. All right. Now I'm going to promise you, I'm going to use none of these um, repeat or use the same rule. All right. Every one of these is unique. And I think this really, I tell you what, if you can manage your way through these four derivatives, you've really, really done a nice job of identifying what the function is and which rule applies. And I think you're really ready to move on and into our next, you know, deeper calculus. So go ahead, good luck, and let's see what we get. All right, the first one up here in the upper left-hand corner, number one, I identified as just a constant function. Um, that's like saying y equals 2 to the second power. You know, the, both, both are constants, so they make a constant, and the derivative is simply 0. And that's called the, what I call the constant rule, for lack of a better name. Real exciting, huh? Yeah, I, my creativity is off the charts at most times. Uh, upper right-hand corner, number two. This is just a very basic exponential function. You probably rated this as the easiest one to do. It's exponential because uh, our base, you know, is just a constant, and his derivative is itself. Very, very famous function. Number three, interesting one. The power rule actually applies to this. If you can take the derivative of x squared, then you can take the derivative of this particular function. The derivative is going to be e times x to the e minus 1 power. And again, I just used the good old-fashioned power rule. The only thing the power rule requires is that your base is a variable and your exponent is a constant. Okay. And then last but not least here, uh, because both the base and variable or I should say, because both the base and exponent were variables, I'm going to use a technique that we learned earlier in the video called logarithmic differentiation. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides before I do any calculus. What that's going to do is that's going to allow me to move the exponent down. Now once I start deriving, it is an implicit problem in this sense. I'm going to do the derivative of y all over y equals, and I got a little product rule we're going to buzz through here real quick. And as we clean this bear up, we're going to say that the derivative is 1 plus the natural log of x, multiply the y to the other side, and substitute. Boom, there it is. So we tried to throw four different bear traps at you, and I hope you did well. And uh, we just got one mini lesson to go. All right, our last mini lesson, we're going to talk about bases other than e with regards to logarithmic functions. And it all goes back to a little rule we learned in Algebra 2 trig. And that rule is what we call the change of base rule. This is a really subtle rule that probably didn't hardly show up on your, you know, like a blimp on the radar screen, so to speak. Change of base rule. All right. And here's what the change of base rule said in Algebra 2. We said that the log of base A of x is equivalent to the log of x divided by the log of A. Now, in that particular problem, we chose to use base tens on this side. Technically, you're allowed to use any base on this side that your heart desires. You know, so I could have said, you know, the log of x divided by the log of a, as long as I'm consistent on top and bottom and I use the same base as I rewrite it. The advantage of that is, you know, we can go from having an ugly base to having a more friendly base like base e's if we want to. So the good news here is I'm not going to teach you another rule. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask that you use a rule that you learned in Algebra 2 and now integrate it with a rule that you've already learned you know, as far as derivatives go. So instantly what we're going to do anytime they give us a function um, like y equals log base you know, b of you know, z. We're going to rewrite it as the natural log of z over the natural log of b and then we're going to go take our derivative from there. So let's go ahead and just talk about the generic rule real quick. If they want to derive the, let's say, log base a of x, what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the problem as the natural log of x divided by the natural log of a. And I want to reemphasize that a is a constant. And because a is a constant, then we could say that the natural log of a is also a constant. All right, so that must be true. And to make sure that we stay away from the quotient rule, I'm going to have you rewrite this as 1 divided by the natural log of a times the natural log of x. And so the 1 over the natural log of a is strictly your coefficient, and it's going to come along for the ride. And so the derivative is going to be your coefficient times 1 over x, 
Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of that story. So let's go practice one example really quick and we'll call it a day. So here's a fun function. Let's say y equals log base 9 of the cosine of x. So without doing any calculus yet, I'm just going to rewrite this as the natural log of cosine divided by the natural log of 9. And I'm going to emphasize to myself that 1 over the natural log of 9 is strictly the coefficient and that the natural log of cosine of x is the function I really want to attack. The derivative is simply going to be the coefficient coming along for the ride times du over u, which in this case is negative sine of x over the cosine of x. And that's it.